In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. If you look ahead in the prayer for the offertory, it's from Psalm 136. And by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and we cried, longing for Sion. This is in reference to the children of Israel's 70 years of captivity in Babylon, known as the Babylonian captivity. And in this psalm, they recognize the reason they've been separated from their homeland. It was an account of, I'm sure you know the answer, their sin. They had offended Almighty God. They had fallen away. Unfortunately, this is a common theme in the Old Testament. How the people would fall away after time. They would be influenced by outside sources. They would accept then pagan deities. We think to this, it's the kind of the characteristic of the chosen people. Strong-willed, but their will was not always properly directed. Even the name that Jacob was given, the name of Israel, strong against God, the name he received after wrestling all night with an angel. It's almost just declaring to him his predominant fault. You think about it. To say you're strong for God, in defense of God, but it's said against God. So, this was the trait. A strong-willed, but oddly misguided people. I say oddly because they had the law given to them. They witnessed the miracles of Almighty God. And the miracles in the Old Testament, those in which the children, especially when they were traveling from Egypt to the Promised Land, as you know, they took a detour of 40 years as a punishment. The miracles they witnessed were a little bit more grand. A lot of the the lightning and the thunder truly get their attention. And yet, with understanding all these things, they would still fall away. And you know the story of Moses. Went up to the mountain. We don't know if he's dead. What was their solution We shall make a new God out of gold. Obviously, this was due to the Egyptian influence they had. We could say they hit the panic button. You say they did not have trust in God. And trust is needed. said, this is a theme. All the way, hundreds of years later, after Moses, after King David, after King Solomon, when the kingdom of Israel split into two, Israel and Judea, even after that, they're sent to captivity. And now they long for Sion. They now long for God in His good and merciful law. Being separated from the temple, being separated from divine worship, now they long for it. Now that they don't have it, we could say they took it for granted.
this theme of longing is the predominant feature in today's, you might say today's feast, but for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. It really is of hope. They were trusting and hoping they would be delivered from their agony, from their turmoil, from their suffering. And hoping that by their tears, which would have been true tears of repentance, that God would deliver them. So we see the parallel in our life now. And I mean the life of the Catholic. How we are supposed to be longing for Sion. For Sion is heaven. Longing for salvation. Putting forth the effort. Do we long for Christ? That's the question. Do we need Christ in our lives? Do we have a desire for heaven? Do we think about heaven? And all that we say and do, do we allow the thought, what would God want me to do? What is the best decision that I can make to benefit my salvation? St. Paul in today's epistle lays out the life of the wise man, the wise way. First thing you can bring up is the wise man never wastes his time. He uses it well. He uses it towards his salvation. The words, I am bored, should never cross our lips. If we find ourselves being bored a lot, it's an opportunity to examine our conscience, to examine what it is we need to do to rectify that. Usually the solution is to just keep doing what you're doing. I'm bored with this entertainment. Let me go to that entertainment. I'm bored at this place. Let me go to that place. I'm bored with the mundane. But if heaven is our goal... It is anything but mundane. (laughs) There is the... We say we desire heaven. To have in our soul a need to be united with, with Christ. Do we have that? Or would we rather go to the world? If we take care of our time, if we make the best use of it, it doesn't mean we have to be in prayer 24-7. It's not what God calls us to do, to be on our knees. He expects us to be working. He expects us to do our duty. And in that we make it a prayer. We make everything a prayer. So, we say, Lord, what should I do that I have this downtime? How can I make the best use of it? Do we look at our schedule? I have a very packed schedule here today. We're running around here, we're running and doing there. Take the kids here, we gotta go here. To schedule our time. Do we fit a little time for prayer in that schedule? If we have that open slot, 
even if it's just to say a decade of the rosary. You can ask God, which is more beneficial? That I engage in some world, worldly triviality or I do something that can help my soul. Another thing that St. Paul brings up <clears throat> is how the wise man guards his passions, does not allow himself to be carried away one way or the other. If you want a visual example, the wise man is like a pond. And no matter how many rocks you throw into it, it will not ripple. It stays calm. When we think of the passions of the world, how they draw, how they distract us, that is where one has to build up a passion for salvation. A passion for salvation does not ripple the soul in the way the world does. It has that calming effect. The next thing the wise man looks to do is guarding the tongue. Not to say a necessary word. Why? Why say something that could be slanderous, detracting somebody else, calumniating them? What, what good? We guard our tongue. The wise man follows the path of gratitude to God for all that they receive. Anything that helps towards salvation. Anything that aids me while I'm in this valley of tears. While we are in our own Babylon. Anything that He gives me. Any grace that is available to me. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. then, of course, we have the equality, the virtue of humility before the world. Because in our words and our actions, we are ambassadors to Christ. We are not just working on our own salvation, but how it connects with our neighbor, desiring that they come to know Christ in the fullness of grace, not just partly. Because one of the things that those who receive Christ in their own image is they, they lack the complete dogma, the complete doctrine. They lack the complete Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He is the Lawgiver. And in humility, we submit to His law. And showing individuals this is not a slavery. This is freedom. This is true freedom because we're free from sin. Free from attachment to this world. This is what this time in the liturgical year is about. We are in the harvest time, liturgically speaking. <clears throat> when we come to the last Sunday in Pentecost, what is the theme? The judgment. Not only harvesting, but reaping. Now that's when they will be separated. What will be put into the storage and what will be cast away into fire. It symbolizes 
this time in our lives. We have to work out salvation. But if we do not think of heaven, if we do not think of the gifts that we receive in the beautiful liturgy, the ceremonies in the church, then we would not have that longing. We must ask God for the grace of longing, longing to be with Him, never having enough. That's the greatest beauty in the love of God. We can never desire enough. We can never want enough. See, I, I, have, I am... You see the parallel, the things of this world. That a person has to keep trying something different, going, getting more of something to get that same satisfaction. And it's empty. But with God, when He fills the soul, when He takes it to a higher level of holiness, and He says, I want you to take more. I want you to desire more. I want you to be conformed to me more. I want to illuminate you, my grace. To come to this deeper knowledge of God, of our salvation, is what should be the moving force in our lives. Because that is true wisdom. Measuring everything to our salvation. And we know as Catholics that salvation, the grace of salvation, comes only through His Holy Church. Through the sacraments, through the dogmas, through the doctrines. And most especially in the practical, through the cross. To imitate Christ, especially in Christ crucified, we find our salvation. We find the answer to our sighs, our weeping. Before we see Christ, our glory, our Lord, forever. Amen. Benedictio Dei potentis, Patris, Spiritus Sancti, Amen.